Welcome to Getting Real with John Natale. This is episode 22, your five best sources for business in the real estate industry. I'm extremely excited to unpack this episode for you. No matter if you're a brand new agent, getting into the business, you've been doing this for a few years, you're a wily veteran like myself, no matter what, I know you'll draw inspiration from this episode where I discuss the five best sources for real estate business in today's world. Not what worked in 1995, not what worked in 2012, but what is working in 2020. Before I go into I have to take a minute to thank you for your support of this podcast, for supporting our mission here at Getting Real and here at our Natalie Company, because we are fundamentally redesigning the real estate industry. To, we have an unbelievable nationwide coaching organization that is absolutely crushing it. So if you've thought about joining us, now is the time. Step up into 2020 and absolutely crush this year. In the links below, you can book a one-on-one -on -one call, a coaching discovery call with me. It is absolutely free. And I will discuss what we're doing nationwide to absolutely crush it in 2024. If you could share this podcast, if you could rate us five stars wherever you are listening and or watching, I'd be so damn appreciative of you. Now let's dive in to the five best sources of real estate business in 2024. And all five of these are important. And when I get to the last one, I really want you to pay attention solely for the fact that in that last one, it can be a little bit tricky. But we are going to start a little bit old school with number one. Your best source of business, no matter if you are brand new in the real estate industry, you have been doing this for a few years with some success, you've been doing this for a handful of years, bouncing between success and not so much success, you've been doing this for a long, long time, doesn't matter. Your best source of business, and typically the most premium commissions you can make, and most likely the best clients and the most fun you are going to have, is from your sphere of influence. That is the people that already know you. They already like you. They already trust you. They already know you. And it is so vital that you are leaning on them at all stages of your career. Your sphere of influence does change as you go on, though. To be realistic, if you've been doing this for 15 years, your sphere of influence is not only the people that are in your family, your friends, all those like close people that were in there from the beginning, or the people you've made acquaintances with over time. It is also all of your past clients and the people that know you through your past clients. So it is that entire network. That's why I always say real estate doesn't get simple or dramatically easier. It's always a challenge, but it does get easier as you go through your career because your, your sphere of influence just naturally grows as you sell houses and do a great job because clients really do become friends and they become your biggest fans. I have some clients and some past clients that will refer me more and more business than people in my direct family will. And that will happen to you as well. So as you grow in your career, your sphere of influence grows. But when you're in the very early stages, you have to lean on those people close to you. You have to get over being uncomfortable talking to them. So one of my best practices that I have every single new agent that onboards here at our company do is a very simple one, and I suggest you do it. No matter where you are in your career, if you're in a little bit of a rut right now and you need to turn things around in 2024, do this, and I bet you your year looks dramatically different than 2023. I call it a one by five by three. Very simple. You call, text, however, mode of, of reaching out to a person, but you reach out to and invite one person per day to meet for you with a cup of coffee, lunch, something, five days a week, for three weeks. So it could be people that you already know. It could be your brother. It could be your sister. It doesn't matter. It could be your best friend. It could be an acquaintance. It could be a colleague at a, a past job. It doesn't matter who it is. I think if you want to solidify your sphere of influence, if you have coffee for three weeks over a three week span with one person per day and just put all of your effort into that, forget about all the other noise, forget about social media for a minute, forget about, you know, all these other things you can do and just say, how am I going to set up 15 cups of coffee with 15 people over the next three weeks. If you do that, your sphere of influence, that circle of people around you is solidified. And it's not to sit there and talk to them about real estate either. It's to talk about them and their life. And they'll naturally ask about you and yours. Oh, I just got into real estate. I'm with so-and-so company. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. It's been a lot of fun so far. That is the power in what that exercise does. 
It's not about to get in front of him and be like, hey, do you want a CMA? Or hey, I would love to come by your house to tell you how much it's worth. Well, I'm not interested in moving. It's it's not necessarily even to get those people's business. It's just to spread 15 people out there that will be raving fans of yours even without working with you. These are people that are already going to want to support you. So if you go out and then literally have 15 cups of coffee over those three weeks with 15 different people, you will then have a whole network of people when they hear in the springtime, this episode will probably drop in February, in the springtime, like, oh, so-and-so is moving. Oh, you know what? Stacy just became a real she just, she just invited me for a cup of coffee. That is the power in what that exercise does. It spreads out your sphere of influence. And another great, really easy exercise to reach out to your sphere of influence. So when you tap those 15 people, the next best thing, and this is especially, especially for the people that have some experience in this industry, but even if you don't, even if you just know where some friends and family live, is to go into your MLS, go into, if you have access to RPR or something similar, I, I like to take it off Zillow, but if you want to use a Zillow and his estimate, or Redfin and their estimate or realtor.com estimate, I don't care if you want to use one of the portals. However, I prefer you take this onto our technology rather than someone else's. So we use RPR. And what we do is we take their RPR report, take a screenshot of the first thing that has like the range of the estimate in which it could sell for. And say like, and we take that, we screenshot it. And then we text three to five people a day and say, hey, Stacy, I have some thoughts about this. What are yours? It is naturally going to open up a conversation, especially if there's someone who bought a house in 2017 with you. Or if it's someone that's just a friend of yours that you bought a house in 2021 and now it's worth quite a bit more. Or they bought it in 2012 and it's worth, you know, five times more. This is a very easy exercise to reach out to your sphere that, again, gets those conversations going because you need to lean on those people because they're the people that just call you and say, hey, John, I'm ready to sell and I'm looking to buy here. Let's go. And if you have those people in your corner, you will do dramatically better in real estate. So please. Please do those two things. If you are struggling right now or you just want to grow and get bigger this year, it doesn't even have to be from a bad place, get 15 people to have a cup of coffee coffee with you over the next three weeks. doesn't matter how that looks, but 15 people over the next three weeks. And then also on top of that, start texting out your RPR reports for people's addresses and say, hey, I have some thoughts about this. What are yours? Because they're going to want your opinion anyway, but I want to hear what they have to say first. Because a lot of time the people come people come back and go, Oh my God, if I got that number, I'd sell in a minute. And you go, you really actually could. Where would you go? And then it just opens up a conversation. It doesn't always lead to them automatically moving. But again, it's just a natural, organic way to reach out to your sphere. So please lean on your sphere. If you're brand new, you can do both of these things and just lean on them. A lot of people are so fearful to talk to their aunts, their uncles, their cousins, their friends about real estate. Every single great real estate agent that I've interviewed, worked with, coached, doesn't matter. Every single one, when they started out, almost all of their business came from their sphere. They weren't shy about it. And you can't either. And yes, people will use someone else. It'll burn. But I don't give a shit. You have to get over it a little bit. Reach out to those people and be very proactive. And then the business will come back to you. I guarantee it. The next great source of business, number two is open houses. This is a great source of business for one big reason. These are typically somewhat motivated people that are coming through the door that you get to meet face to face. And these aren't, you know, leads out in the universe. These aren't, you know, uh, could be incorrect numbers, could be bad people. They are real people walking through the door and you get to meet them face to face. That's why open houses work. You have to have a great strategy for it. Believe it or not, my next episode is going to be how to crush your open houses. So I will describe a little bit more in that episode, my next episode. But the reality is open houses lead to a great source of business, especially early on. Middle of career, veteran, doesn't matter. A lot of people lean on open houses for for business. And the reason being is motivated people come to the door. Yes, you could sometimes get looky-loos, you could get some neighbors, but that just means they're probably looking sometime in the future. Or if they're a neighbor, they're seeing how well of a job you're doing to potentially hire you if they were to ever sell. So Don't take the people, like someone who's dramatically not even interested in ever moving, hates real estate, is not going to walk through an open house. But people who might be interested in moving over the next year or two or three is going to come through an open house. So you're going to have to refine your process. You're going to have to offer that great, great open house, the great service, meet people, look them in the eye, do all these different things to really connect. You're going to have to follow up with them that night. 
You're going to have to you know, put them on some sort of drip campaign to really make sure you're following up with them. That's all secondary to the fact that just doing the open house will lead to business. If you do it really well, it'll lead to a lot of business. And it also just gets you active. And I find it wherever you are in your career, uh, it's very important to just be active. And open houses make you active. They get live buyers through the door, which are also potentially in this market right now, potentially sellers as well. And it gets you in front of those people. The other thing open houses allow you to do is utilize that house for some sort of social media, which is our number three best source of business, especially in 2024. Guys, our entire coaching group across the country absolutely crushes it with this. Everyone draws business from social media. And the reality is the entire industry has changed in the last year or two. Even four or five years ago, yes, social media was important. I used it so heavily in my business in 2018, 2017, 2016. But here's the difference of today's social media versus 2018, 2017, whenever, is organic, natural reach to strangers. You see, social media in 2018, I used it so heavily to lean on my sphere. Again, one of the key aspects of leaning on your sphere is to still be active on social media. So they see you doing different things. They see you going to houses. They see you touring homes. They see your advice. They see your local knowledge. They see all these different things you're doing. Where social media actually gets people to reach out to you. I just had a consultation yesterday with someone who just DM'd me on TikTok. It's like, John, I see your videos. Uh, or I saw your one video. This is not someone who saw all my videos. I saw one video. You seem like you the area. I was doing a home tour. I would love to discuss me buying a house in that area. Not whatever I was doing a home tour for is totally different price point, totally not totally different area, but different town. And I would love to discuss it with you. Out station. Oh yeah, I'm also going to be listing my house, and my son also has a house to list. So this one lead turns into a buyer and potentially two sales on top of it, and it all came from creating content and putting it on social media. And this is the results that everyone in our coaching group is seeing. It's not just myself; it's everyone, and some at an even higher level. And the reality is social media works for drawing in business, but you have to know what to post. You have to know what a consumer wants to see. A consumer doesn't want to see just solds, just listings. They don't give a shit. They really don't. You're doing that to stroke your own ego and for other agents to see and go, oh, wow, she sold another house. Consumers themselves don't care. To a certain degree, yes, you have to tell the stories of those sales so you connect with your audience. However, the just solds, just listed of, of that's your social media content is never going to convert anything, ever. But what will convert is creating a message, creating an avatar of who you are, putting it out there really, really consistently, showing people what they want to see, which is typically houses, local knowledge, local content. And if you're able to share those things with them, people will reach out to you to work with you directly from being a stranger to knowing you. And the great thing is if you do it really consistently, people will feel like they really do know you. And that's a powerful thing. And I'm sure you have judgments. If you're watching this podcast or listening to this podcast and you found me on social media and you consume a lot of my content, I'm sure you have a picture of who I am. And it's not that I'm a dramatically different person. I do try to just offer who the hell I am in a lot of this because I know that that's what actually draws in an audience. But at the same time, that's a powerful thing in business because when you go out there, and I go on the phone with this conversation from the other day and we connect over the phone and I'm the same person I am in my content. She's like, yeah, we're going to work with you. We're going to buy. We're going to sell. Boom. Let's get this done this spring. It's that powerful. So social media is a huge avenue of business. However, it has to do be done properly. And I see about, honestly, 80 to 90% of agents don't do it properly. People don't care about your latest tips on buying a house. They don't care about what days on market is. They don't care about your just sold, your just listed, like I said. They care about houses, local knowledge, local content. Not yet, to be honest, if you want to convert at a high level. Number four, in terms of five best sources of business, and this one is so overlooked by so many of us in this industry, and that is networking. And networking could look in so many different ways for you. It could be going to your typical BNI, LATIP type of networking events or networking groups where there's one of every industry, you pay for it. It could be specific to the type of person you are. I know our area has a lot of you know, women's groups or mom's groups or younger women's groups or, you know, dad's groups and then another thing based on your 
your you know demographic per se or, or your age and different things like that. Those all exist out there for networking. There's chamber of commerce in an individual town, sometimes your county, sometimes your state. There's all different ways to network. But just getting around the room as other business owners does two really big things. One, it does lead to business. There's no way shape around it. Like most people, if they are in business and then you're there as well and you're looking to grow your business and they're looking to grow theirs, there's a lot of synergy there and they will refer you and or you utilize you in their business. But number two, like the, the second thing that I really love about networking is you grow as a business person. You grow outside your comfort zone because you're meeting someone, if you think you have a good business, that's doing it at an even higher level or someone who maybe just leans on you a little bit to teach them something. Maybe you're really good on social media and they have no idea and you get to show them a couple things. But they own an HVAC business where they just went to someone's house and they're going to be selling next year. And they told those people that, you know, they just met a great real estate agent. So there's so many different avenues where networking can work. You just have to find a crew. I will also leave you with this. If you look out there and you say, okay, I don't want to do any of these other networking, create your own type of thing. That's one thing I did early in 2023 that has honestly really helped shape my life to this point is I got together with past clients, friends, you know, kids I grew up with that now own businesses 20 something years later and said, you know, hey, I know we haven't talked in 15, 20 years, but you know, we're connected on social media and I see you own your business. I'm starting this networking group. Uh, I want it to be mostly people our age, you know, millennials that own businesses. You know, are you interested? And I, we got a you know, small group together in 2023, it's about five, six, and now we're at eight or nine, 10 people. And it's growing, and that's not a cost thing, but it's, again, elevating your room. That's what networking is about. It leads to deals, yes, but it also just elevates you in business. And I think so many people make that mistake where they are and they stay complacent. You have to always be leveling up. So in the networking group, there's some solopreneurs that I you know, know. There's some that run teams. There's some that you know are third-generation business owners with 80 employees. There's even some that are heads of tech ventures that are $80, $100 million valuations. So we can all lean on each other in different avenues of how to grow our businesses and different issues that we're having. So if you look out there and you say, I can't really find it, grab three or four people. Grab some friends. Even if it's just starting with like a mortgage, people you know in the business, mortgage lender, an attorney, and just say, hey, I want to just grow as a group. Are you interested? And I'm telling you, 99% of people are going to say yes. So many people in this world, guys, lack social interaction and that relationship part of their life. And when you are the key, that cog that kind of brings people together and community together, you see your world level up. So networking works to drive business and it also works to level up your business. So you get to a better place, which then grows everything else around you. And the last piece, and again, this is a tricky one because you could get caught up in it and you could also get stuck in it. But number five for the best sources of business is paid leads. And it's not because you should solely rely on paid leads by any way, shape, or form unless you're sitting on a lot of money. Or if you're brand new, this may look like the company in which you join or the team in which you join providing leads. Here's where you need to be careful. I'm going to say it before I even go into the benefits. Where you need to be careful is if paid leads drive up your time where you're not figuring out how to actually fish for business yourself. It is that old adage, if you just give fish, they'll never learn how to fish themselves. And if the fish dry up, go belly up, that person's done so. The business is done. And that's the tricky part. So if you're joining a team, you're in a company, and you are 100% reliant on their paid leads, they're keeping you so busy that you don't know how to actually do any of the other four things that I mentioned, you're in trouble. You're in big, big trouble. Because you're one, always going to be stuck either at that team in that environment. You'll never do anything for yourself. Or number two, if you leave, you'll quickly either have to go back because it won't be as easy. And two, or two, you'll not survive the business because you never figured those things out. So please be very careful with paid leads. But why are they a benefit? It gets you very similar to the open house. It gets you on the phone. It gets you busy. So paid leads, we utilize them. Not to with any portals. We don't give up a chunk of our commission. Hell no. I looked at some companies that do social media marketing and you know pay leads and all these different things. Google pay per click. And I said, why the hell am I going to pay another company to do this for me? I will just figure it out myself. So I took a few thousand dollars and I figured it out how to do it. So now we have a really low cost per lead. 
but it did take some investment on my end. Rather than pay out a company $800, $1,500, $2,000 a month, I took basically one month of that and said, okay, I'm going to figure this out myself. And then we started bringing in paid leads into our company. So we provide not an overwhelming amount, but realistically somewhere between five to 15 paid leads to every agent in our company that produces content or wants to be part of our lead program. And the power in it is it gets you on the phone with some people. Yeah, there's gonna be bad numbers. Yeah, there's gonna be people tell you, go F yourself. I didn't register, all the same BS. However, it gets you on the phone. It gets you out into the field. All of our agents are busy right now. They're running around. They're showing houses. They're selling houses. So it does get you active. It doesn't, we, I like to keep it at a level that it doesn't overwhelm because then they can still figure out, agents at our company can still figure out how to actually gain a business, how to get on social media. But while it's getting you on the phone, getting you out there, you're able to put things up on social media, which then leads back to your sphere seeing it. It also, if you start doing home tours of some of the houses you're showing, it leads to organic people just reaching out to you and it could start the snowball for you. So paid leads, I don't think are the worst thing in the world. I just think agents themselves, those individual agents have to be very, very careful that they are still learning all the other ways to get a business. Because if you don't learn those other ways, whenever those leads stop or you stop because the split might not be what you want it to be and you're running around crazy for a very small sum of money, when that stops, you don't know what to do. So please don't let that be you. It's okay to be at a team that has paid leads. Don't get me wrong. That's perfectly fine. However, if your team leader is not showing you, hey, how to run a great open house or hey, here's how you prospect or here's a great way to do a listing conversation like. I love that you're listening to this podcast or watching this podcast, but if all of your, if you're on a team like that and all of your knowledge is coming from someone like myself or another podcast that you're listening to, you shouldn't be on that team if all you're getting is paid leads. So just be very, very careful with the environment in which you are in. If it's a great environment, it's working for you. Awesome. No problems. I coach agents that are in that environment. It's not a problem, but they also need to learn how to grow a business organically. So one day, if you want to say, you know what? I don't necessarily want to, you know, show houses seven days a week and drive around all over my county or state. And I want to scale it back and really have a substantial business from my sphere, past clients, do past client events, do all these different things. You will then have the power to step away from it if you know how to do those other really four key aspects of business. And I'll leave you with this. It is not about mastering all five at one time. It is about picking one, mastering that. Saying, okay, Networking is leading to me making $100,000 a year. Now, I'm going to still go to networking events, but you know what? I'm also going to add in social media. I'm going to cross on social media for a year or two. That's going to start making me some money. Okay, now we're making $250,000 from networking, social media. Okay, wrap those up. Keep doing them. Then we're going to add in open houses. And open houses lead to money. And then, boom, that's how you grow a natural, organic business. So please don't try to do all five of these at once. These are the five best ways to get business in real estate. There's plenty of others. It's not that every other way is wrong. If you do probate, foreclosures, divorces, there's so many different ways. Newspaper ads, I don't care how. There's so many different ways to get business. But the five best sources are what I highlighted in this episode. And again, guys, if you are struggling out there and or you just want to get to the next level, most of the agents I coach are very highly successful agents and they are just going to the next level. I've spent the last five, six years now going from being the top individual agent to growing a great team, being the top team at our company, to now owning my own company. So I've just laid out this path over the last five, six years. You don't want somebody who did this in 1995. And at the same time, if you're a new agent, we have great coaches coming on, depending on when you're listening to this, or maybe they already came on to our company. So we have an unbelievable platform for you to grow your business. So please, if you are interested, book that one-on-one call. Let's chat about it. Let's discuss it. It's completely free. And let's help you grow in 2024.